Mark Watts, Chuck Kimmerlein, EliteFDS.com. Uh, we're going to talk about today a couple of mechanical drop sets uh, for the bench press. So we talked about the one, two, three, four, five uh, board press, and now we're going to talk about using the Swiss press bar as a way to use uh, different grips uh, and really increase the advantage throughout the set as fatigue sets in. Uh, with the group of athletes, the benefits of this is obviously there's not going to be a lot of changing of weights um, in between sets because of uh, the difficulty uh, is, is decreased as the set goes on. And also uh, a lot of the athletes, if you're doing these for hypertrophy work, you can get a lot of work sets in in a minimal amount of time. So uh, the way we'll do this is you can either have the athletes do uh, a set where they're, uh, they have a rep cap. So again, every grip they're gonna do a certain amount of reps. For today, Chuss is gonna do, he doesn't have a lot of weight on uh, just for demonstration purposes, and we're just gonna use three reps at a time. Normally you might wanna use, uh, you know, whatever it might be, uh, up to 10. Um, the one thing I would avoid is that if you're going all out on every single set, uh, with the rest intervals, even if you have it up to 10, 20, 30 seconds, what happens is you get probably a lot, you know, a lot of double digit reps on the first set, 14 reps on the first set, and then maybe three, then two, then two, uh, a lot of times, even if you have some, some higher uh, athletes with higher work capacity. So uh, one thing to do is just maybe cap those reps and you can always work your way uh, back down or add another set. So the first grip we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna do the inside grip as a reverse grip. This will be the most difficult of all. And then what's gonna happen is again, the athletes are gonna go ahead and just press. Um, and with this again, obviously we're working our way from the inside all the way to the outside. If you have some of those that are gonna be a little bit, uh, you know, uh, athletes that have, maybe you wanna skip some of these grips uh, depending on your on who you're working with. So now now the athlete's gonna turn the, uh, turn the Swiss par around again. So from here, now the athlete has, has the same grip, but now all of a sudden his, his hands are gonna be in a different position. They're not gonna be supinated, they're gonna be pronated. Uh, so he's gonna go ahead and do the next set. So again, it's gonna be uh, basically a closed grip. And again, that inside grip could kind of alleviate some pressure on the wrist. All right, so then we'll rack it up. And then from there, now we'll work our way out. Like I said before, if you have certain grips you want to move, um, you, you want to skip or whatnot, or if you want to stop, you can. So again, now we're going to go to the neutral grip. This is a grip if we have an athlete that's um, working any kind of max effort type work or circa max effort type work, that first neutral grip with the thicker handles, that's the one we prefer to use some of our max effort work because again, it's the most advantageous position in my opinion to produce enough force. So again, now the athlete is working his way out. So again, these rests might be anywhere between uh, five to 10. The rest interval might be five seconds, 10 seconds, whatnot. But as you can see, obviously, as the grip gets wider, the mechanical advantage increases and then the athlete can get more work without have to get off the bench at all. So you can get a lot of athletes get that work done in, in a minimal amount of time and high intensity set and then get them out. So again, um, so that, those are grips. If we want to do that last grip, you can. You can work your way back in. It's just basically up to you. So you have a little bit of variety using that Swiss press bar uh, for a basic mechanical drop set. Really good for hypertrophy work uh, in, in a group setting and a team setting.